This is one of the techniques that I use for sketching and I like to do it this way just because it's so quick and easy to do and it's a good way to show your professors um, or even yourself what ideas you have in your head. And you can also do it to show it to clients. It's quick. You can do these in about an hour and I recommend you do a lot of them. It just helps make your ideas stronger. But what you want to start doing um, is grab a pencil and start sketching a perspective that you're interested in showing. And don't worry about it being perfect. Actually, the, the more messy the lines are, the better this is going to work. And that's because uh, you won't see mistakes as easily if there's a lot of uh, lines going on. Now, you don't want to do sketchy lines, but it is OK to go over like I'm doing. Um, a hundred times over the same line like there's no problem with that just make sure they're confident strokes that you're doing as uh, the be the more detail that you're showing the better this is gonna look so try to show as much glazing as you can a lot of openings um, steps and once you have that laid out like I said don't worry uh, about it being perfect you're gonna grab a sharpie and you're gonna start to trace over the lines that you drew making them thicker you can go over them a few times each. It's not a problem. Just don't do, um, you know, those sketchy lines. Make sure they're very confident strokes that you're doing. Now, when you're drawing things like stairs, it doesn't have to be perfect. You might be tempted to use something like a ruler and you could do that, but again, I'm gonna stress that the more imperfect this is, the better it's gonna look at the end. Something I like to do when I draw plants and trees is that I draw them as if I'm doing a cursive S and I just do that over and over and over again for plants and trees alike. When I draw trees, I try to draw different types like palm trees and as I'm showing you here, uh, you just do similar strokes to the S, but you're just making curves instead. Make sure to draw your mullions in, your glazing. Make sure to go back and draw whatever is, is supposed to be 3D. Make sure you give it some depth so that it looks more realistic. What I like to do is sometimes I grab an even uh, a slightly thicker Sharpie and I'll go over the outer edges so that it really pops from the drawing. The good thing about sketching is that you can add things after. It's not like a rendering where if you spent a few hours rendering and you want to change something, you have to go back and redo the whole thing. Now, once you're done with your sketch, go ahead and scan it or use a cam scanner app on your on your phone. And let's bring that over to Photoshop. And I know a lot of you guys hesitate to use Photoshop when you guys are sketching just because um, you prefer to color it in by hand. And there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, doing things by hand is great. But, you know, acrylic markers, they tend to be really expensive. They can run like three to four dollars each. And it's just it's actually worse for the environment. So it's better if you're using your computer and using Photoshop. And the good thing is that if you're doing what I'm doing here, which is working in layers, you'll be able to change the colors if you want to. And you can play around with them and think about materiality and color in that way. But something that I like to do is, um, for example, in this volume that I made it yellow, I like to pick different yellows and go over it a few times. And you want to make sure you keep the transparency really, really low so that every time you go over it, it gives it that uh, hand quality where it's not perfect and there's different shades. Some, some shades are lighter, some shades are darker. Remember to make it dark wherever a, a shadow would be cast, as I'm doing here. Now I'm doing this with a mouse. You can do it with a drawing tablet if, if it's easier for you. Uh, I don't have one of those and I one time I tried to use them, it didn't turn out too good. So I actually prefer doing it with the mouse just because I'm so used to doing it and I actually like how imperfect it comes out. And you'll notice that I, I make sure that the strokes are visible. And that's why I make sure that the opacity that I'm using is, is slightly low and I play around with different sizes of brush. Now something that you'll notice that I'm doing here is I'm actually drawing over the entire volume and then I'll go back to the layer and I'll crop things out that are not part of the volume that I need colored. 
as I'm doing with the glazing here, for example. And again, feel free to use different similar toned colors, uh, such as blue, purple, everything that's very similar so that when you draw it in, it gives it that feeling of uh, reflection. And it's also a good idea to bring the sketch to the top of the layers list and set it to like a darken filter so that you can see what's behind it. Now the bigger the tree is that you're drawing, the better it's going to look when you start to color it in. As you see here, it doesn't look that great because you're not able to differentiate the different colors that I'm using. So when drawing your perspectives, try to include some of the foliage that's closer to you. And that way you can add a little bit more details. You can add some more deeper greens, some more yellows. In my case, what I did is I started grabbing miscellaneous colors, reds, purples, yellows, and I started adding dots of that into my plan. So it, it gives it a little bit of more color definition. For the sky, I don't really like to get too into it. So what I usually do is I grab a, a light blue and I'll just color everything. Um, I'll just color completely over my drawing, but I always make sure it's on a separate layer. And then once I have that, I make it fade to white. And what I do is I'll go back to that layer and I'll trim out everything uh, where the building is at so that it falls behind. There's other ways to do this, but this is the quickest way that I do it. I do it with the, with the lasso tool. It's always a good idea to make a new layer, your one of your last layers, a uh, shadow layer. Grab a, a few grays and start going over to create that effect of a shadow being cast from the building itself and from all the other elements in the scene. And then finally here, what we're gonna do is add uh, the effect of a reflection. And how we do that is that we take some of the similar colors, the reds and the yellows that are showing here in the building and even the blue, and we'll start to draw those very lightly on the floor. And you can create a layer called reflection for this. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a, a little effect that I like to add at the end of my sketches. Um, the good thing about these sketches, as I said before, is that they're really quick. This this exercise here took me about maybe one hour to do and maybe a little bit less actually and you can do 10 of these in one day. You can just sit down and knock a bunch of designs out of your head before you even start to design just so you can see what exactly is in your mind. And if you look at this sketch for example, I noticed that the stairs are very awkwardly placed so if I was to really design this building, um, I probably wouldn't design those stairs to look like that. Uh, here you see that I'm playing a little bit with color to try to see if maybe I can, um, maybe changing the materiality of the stairs would fix the issue, but definitely not. It, it looks like a, an eyesore being there.
It's also great that you can go back and play around with the colors and start to think about the materials and colors in that way. And that concludes this little tutorial. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you have any questions at all, make sure to reach out and I'll try to help you. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you next time.